just want to uh, dedicate this 9-11 uh, anniversary, 10th year anniversary here in Toronto to all the truth movements out there, all the We Are Change uh, movements out there. I want to give them a big thank you for all the uh, hard work they've done. I want to give uh, thanks to all the, um, all the first responders who actually were, uh, were killed that day and some of them are still suffering from, uh, from their illnesses today. Uh, well, they're the real heroes in this. Yeah, we're doing good here today. It's a beautiful day for it. A few chemtrails out there a while back, uh, late morning, but all in all, it turned out to be a good day. Today is uh, actually the, uh, the 10th uh, of uh, September. God help those and the victims and their families. The United Airlines plane. That's exactly right, John, with 45 people total. About two miles from the Pentagon, you can see the smoke billowing up from the building. This has to be deliberate, folks. Some of the key suspects come to mind, Osama bin Laden. All the material for 9-11, Building 7, all that, uh, big envelopes. We're doing good here, so good day for it. So we're going to get out more truth. All in all, it's uh, been, a, been a very positive day, so, and Tyrone Drummond from uh, Ottawa was here. Danny, thanks for everything that you're doing for the last few years, uh, couldn't do it without yeah, you. Yeah, well, thanks for uh, Press for Truth for inviting me out to help them out with uh, filming these hearings. We've basically seen all the uh, experts are basically out there. Check out the National Post, the truth is out there, truthers are out there. Uh, you know, I got, I got stuck in the back of the picture too, in the corner. No, I didn't, uh, didn't see that one, no, no. Still in good condition, yeah. Just to uh, give people the uh, the idea that the the, uh, the official story of 9/11 doesn't really hold water anymore. It used to at one time when we were all gullible and following everything that the government and propaganda, the media were always talking about. So. Even a couple of days afterwards, they were saying that Bin Laden was uh, behind 9/11. How they know he's behind 9/11? So so fast. Doesn't make sense. You can actually hear uh, Howard Stern saying it on uh, New York's most popular radio show, saying that it was Bin Laden and that they should invade Iraq and Afghanistan. Yeah. Uh, guys like Bin Laden yeah. say this all the time and it doesn't necessarily ever come to fruition. And yeah, but the point is I'm, I'm crediting him with this attack. A lot of people are asking me, how do we get our information? I said, well, we'll get our information from uh, different media sources. Uh, and we look at the, the DVDs, we watch them, and uh, we study them. We read uh, a lot of the uh, articles, stuff like that, and then we see which way the, uh, the evidence points. Go get him, George. Now, I heard a rumor he's going to be there tomorrow. Yeah, I heard about that. Obama's going to be there as well. So, it's going to be the who's who of the, uh, you know. And it's a funny thing that uh, the first responders are uh, not going to be there. They said they weren't invited. I thought that was, when I heard that, I thought that, that was pretty sick, you know what I mean? How could you not invite them? They're 9-11 they're heroes. I think it's been 10 years since 9-11. Uh, you see your government pushing things like um, naked body scanners, and uh, soon they'll have brain scanners. They got TSA. Uh, they're going to have TSA soon on the street level. They're already on uh, train stations. I'm sure we'll have a Canadian... Uh, well, I think we already do have a Canadian transit safety or something. Uh, people are going to be wondering why, why, why. They're going to keep blaming 9-11. Now, if we could prove that 9-11 was an inside job, then all of this stuff would go away. It would be, hey, we need, we need body scanners. Why? It was an inside job because now you can't cite 9-11. Now you can't really put on body scanners, right? But then another thing, a big thing, is on this 10th anniversary, the heroes, the 9-11 people, the only heroes of 9-11, the people who went into the buildings and risked their lives to save the people who were dying have actually been barred from attending the 9-11 ceremony. You got like a whole bunch of politicians who caused the event. The villains, of the real villains of 9-11 are going to be the ones there spreading their lies when the heroes of 9-11 have been barred. Why? The public now, uh, they're watching the news. They see a lot of strange things quite often on the news. Now, the public needs on the news, hey, the heroes of 9-11 are barred. What's going to go through their head? They're going to wonder why. Well, they'll never be able to figure it out, but the reason why is because 9-11 was an inside job, and the heroes who went into that building heard the bombs. They were there. They know this. If they go there and they speak up at the 9-11 ceremony, it could be a big deal. 
So that's why they're barred. They're going to have the villains instead. The heroes are not allowed. Complete reverse. We got a complete opposite world. Kaboski the Prophet. Check the album. Yeah, 10 years after 9-11, uh, 20 years after George uh, Bush Sr.'s speech about uh, the New World Order, a thousand points of light speech. So this is it is a big idea, a New World Order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause. A New World Order can emerge. A New World Order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. No peaceful international order is possible if larger states can devour their smaller neighbors. You might be interested to know that the only thing George Herbert Walker Bush asked me to do is to preserve the points of light. I've spoken of a thousand points of light, of all the community organizations that are spread like stars throughout the nation doing good. Talks about a thousand points of light, but as usual, he's being modest because in our great country, there are millions of points of light that illuminate Illuminate. Look at Libya. Libya, right now, is in shambles. Afghanistan is in shambles. Iraq is in shambles. All about imperialism. The World Trade Center site is 16 acres. The museum and memorial will cover eight acres and is scheduled to open on September the 11th, 2011. Images of the memorial draw the eye to waterfalls that mark the Twin Towers' original footprint. But how do you see this experience for people who come here? I think that this eight-acre memorial plaza is meant to be and will be a really separate space within this city. You're going to come here, you're going to approach the memorial pools, you're going to have these massive waterfalls and both the sound of the falling water, which is a huge 52,000 gallons of water per minute, to have that sound, to have the 400 trees surround you, to have the names of the victims in front of you, it's going to feel like a very separate, special place. The forensic evidence that you've seen is very real. New light has been shown. A third beam now reaches into the pitch black sky and stands in for the still officially unexplained free fall destruction of the World Trade Center Building 7. My first reaction was that looks like controlled demolitions. So it's uh, Toronto True Seekers down here, Saturday, September 10th, day before 9-11, uh, the 10 year anniversary, and we're talking about this little pamphlet here, Understanding Secret Societies. For the most part, it's about the symbols, pentagrams, hexagrams, crescent moons, uh, crosses that we have in everyday life and that we associate with mostly religions, and uh, what they really mean. What do they mean? I did, yeah. So if you go through the history, the Bible paints a pretty clear picture uh, about one of Satan's main goals, and that is to mix man with beast, genetic engineering. And uh, we find this theme throughout Masonic imagery. Uh, these are the tower, uh, the pillars of Jenkin and Boaz. And you see a lot of DNA strands, uh, even in historical pieces of art. A lot of pentagrams, such as the uh, Mason Square and Compass there. Even the Rothschilds. Uh, Rothschild means red shield. The funny thing about the hexagram is that if you calculate the angles of all of the triangles, the small ones and the two large ones, uh, the angles come out to 60 degrees each, 666. So there's a theme here with 666, uh, DNA strands, and even the chromosomes. We have a lot of symbols that correlate with either, you know, the idea that we're fusing 
uh, the sons, how it's said in the Bible, the sons of God with the daughters of men, so fallen angels with, you know, human women, and they're trying to do that through DNA. And that's essentially what this extremely complex little pamphlet is about. New York native Larry Silverstein's company, Silverstein Properties, acquired the lease to the World Trade Center in 2001. This was an attack on America, and not to rebuild these buildings uh, would be to give the terrorists exactly what they were looking for. One World Trade Center is being built. And Obama's going to be there as well for the anniversary, so, so hopefully everything will go well there, and uh, hopefully not too much spin of the 9-11 uh, propaganda that they've been spinning. Uh, we have a few small reports from Hillary Clinton saying that there are unconfirmed uh, you know, reports that there's going to be a terrorist attack. It's very general, very you know, non-specific about if anything really could happen. So I want to say thanks to, uh, to Stephen Jones, physicist, for, uh, for giving us all the information about the nanothermite and the, and the dust. Thank you to him and also to William Rodriguez, the last man out of the, uh, out of the towers. And I want to give him a big thank you for all that he's done and giving me the inspiration. And he's also a 9-11 uh, true hero. And also my friend uh, Jim Fetzer, uh, founder of the Scholars for 9-11 Truth. I want to give him a big thank you uh, for all the, the work that he's done for uh, the 9-11 Truth movement and uh, and all the information that he's given me. And uh, I talk to him on a regular basis. So uh, thank you to him. And I want to thank everybody at this table for coming out to making this uh, a day a success. Because the truth is going to set us free. And uh, the more DVDs we get out to the people and flyers, uh, the better off we'll be and we'll be in the know. And may we unleash a, as they call it, a holy war on our enemies. This crusade, this war on terrorism, uh, is going to take a while. It's World War III, like I say, one country at a time. Right? So, and it's all going to come this way eventually. We're on that list, but uh, it's going to be a matter of time before it gets here. We see little inklings of, of it here in this country with our eradication of freedom of speech. So. But the table's still up and we still got freedom of speech now, so let's uh, take advantage of it before they take advantage of us. Okay, I want to thank everybody and uh, thanks for coming out for this 9-11 uh, anniversary on the 10th. Tomorrow's the, the 11th, so. Physically, according to physics, according to how the structure was built, what NIST said did, is not what happened. It's absolutely 100% foolproof impossible for those towers who have fallen as a result of plane impacts. See ya. Yeah. And I noticed there's a poster right behind you, uh, Contagion. Nothing for a new Hollywood movie about an outbreak. That yeah, was Matt Damon. Hollywood. <laughs>